Good morning or good afternoon, depending on which time zone you're in. Uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, we are very excited to present to you a new product that Luminex is launching um, in 2021. It is our next generation XMAP instrument called the IntelliFlex. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of Luminex just to get started here uh, from a corporate standpoint. And then I'm going to pass it off to Dr. Sherry Dunbar, who uh, will go into more detail about IntelliFlex, some unique applications we think um, that, that we'll see with the instrument, and then uh, we'll wrap up. So Luminex was founded in 1995 by three brothers that were sitting in a Mexican restaurant and they had a novel idea about color coding microspheres. They literally drew up what they thought was going to be the plan on the back of a napkin and launched Luminex from there. So we've, we're, we're, we're headquartered in Austin, but through partnerships uh, with black science research companies and with other uh, clinical um, companies, we have grown into grown into a global organization of more than 1,300 employees. So the reason that we have partners is when Luminex was was first uh, when it first came about, we had the technology. We, we knew it was a really cool earth uh, earth shattering technology, but we didn't have the resources to really build the assays that would allow the technology to spread globally. So what we did is we partnered with I guess the uh, life science partners and also clinical diagnostic partners. Um, four of the largest partners that we have in the life science world are Millipore, Biorad, Biotechnium, and Thermo. And using this model has is is allowed us to grow from a very small company to where we are today. So just to give you a timeline of where Luminix started and where we're going. So the first instrument, which is the LX100, which some of you may be familiar with, actually shipped in 1997. And then from there, we, we brought, we branched out from just a research market into uh, also the, the clinical diagnostic market with the first test being cystic fibrosis. Uh, from there, we've launched uh, next gen um, XMAP instruments. And also through acquisition, we have also launched um, other platforms that are widely accepted in the clinical Research, or, or sorry, the clinical diagnostic market. Uh, you guys may have heard the news. Um, we were one of the first companies to get a SARS-CoV-2 molecular assay cleared uh, through the FDA. And then we also have a SARS-CoV-2 serology assay that has also been FDA cleared. And you can see on the far right, as we, the, the reason we're here today is because we're gonna discuss in more detail the launch of the IntelliFlex. So the current offering that, uh, that Luminex has on the XMAP technology are the LX200 and the FlexMap 3D. These are both flow-based instruments that are able to read the uh, color-coded microspheres that allows us to um, achieve multiplexing or looking at multiple analytes in a single well. Uh, the 200 and FlexMap line are both flow-based. They have different capabilities. Uh, the 200 will uh, allow you to read up to 100 bead regions per well. So that means that you could look up to 100 analytes at the same time from a single sample. <clears throat> and the flex map was the next gen of our XMAP in instrumentation. And it it'll actually allows you to um, assay up to 500 different uh, analytes in the same time of the same well. So you can see here a lot of, of data can be generated from a single run using, using both of these instruments. So the reason we're here today is to go into more detail and applications of the IntelliFlex. So the IntelliFlex is the fourth gen, uh, the fourth generation of our XMAP instruments. And when we, when we were thinking about building this instrument, we, we really wanted to make sure that we were you know, meeting unmet needs in the market. So we did an extensive voice of customer um, um, to make sure that you know, what, what we're gonna build is going to be what the customers actually need. So three of the the, the, the three bullet points three bullet points here are just a few of the uh, the capabilities of the of, of the of the flex mapping and went into the the reasoning behind it. We built it the way we did. Uh, the most exciting thing about the about the IntelliFlex is it has a dual reporter, 
channel versus a single reporter channel, which Sherry will go into more detail with for different applications uh, that we see can be utilized by customers and also our partners. So now I'm going to pass it off to Sherry, and she is going to go into more detail about Intelliflex. Thank you, Josh, and hello to everyone. I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of XMAP technology. First of all, XMAP is a proven technology. In the 25 years since our company began, there have been over 54,000 peer-reviewed publications that use XMAP technology, either through Luminex or through our partner products. In addition, there's over 1,300 RUO assays that have been developed and more than 100 510K clearances for XMAP technology. Virtually anything that can be covalently coupled to a bead can be used to develop an XMAP assay. For protein analysis, we can use all of the classic assay formats, such as capture sandwich, competitive, and indirect or serology, to identify analytes to study protein expression, immune response, drug monitoring, and many others. The same technology can be used for genomic analyses through the coupling of a capture probe onto the bead. There are also multiple assay chemistries that can be used from direct hybridization to primer extension and oligoligation. And the technology is capable of discrimination to the single nucleotide level. It performs very well for SNP genotyping, microRNA analysis, and it can also be quantitative or semi-quantitative with appropriate standards and controls. The nucleic acid assay has been used for applications such as copy number variation. So how does XMAP multiplexing compare to other common platforms? Well, as compared to singleplex technology such as ELISA, with XMAP, you will be running all of your assays simultaneously in solution. With a small reaction volume, you will use less sample, you will spend less time and less work, and less cost for reagents and consumables. In addition, you will generate more data and really better data, which I'm gonna to explain to you further in a moment. As compared to planar arrays, you will have faster binding kinetics because all of the beads are in suspension and you have a very high surface to volume ratio, which can also provide better sensitivity. As an example, in order to analyze 43 targets from 27 samples in triplicate, you would need to perform almost 3,500 single plex reactions, which would require 37 96 well plates. Whereas on XMAP technology, you only need one. Luminex's partners have really taken the technology to the next level. With over 1,300 assays, as well as custom assay capabilities available for many of our partners, and various analysis software packages that can be used to analyze the data that's generated. In addition, our Kit Finder app, which is available on the Luminex website, can help you find a kit for your analytes and your species of interest. Let's talk briefly about how the detection works on our flow analyzers. The completed assay containing the multiplexed beads is aspirated into the sample cuvette in a rapidly flowing fluid stream. Hydrodynamic focusing confines the beads to the center of the sheath fluid core and sends the beads past the lasers one at a time. Each bead is excited with the red laser to measure the unique combination of dyes inside the bead, which identifies the bead region and hence the specific assay being measured. The green laser excites and measures the surface orange fluorescence to quantify the amount of analyte that has been bound. So now how are the data analyzed? For each reaction, we typically measure a minimum of 50 beads for each bead color or bead set that is in the reaction. And we determine the median of fluorescence intensity measured for those beads. We call this value the MFI. So and unlike an ELISA where you are measuring the sum of the signal in a well, each bead is measured as a replicate of that reaction. And for each well, we're essentially measuring 50 replicates and reporting the median of those measurements. 
And the median is really the best statistic to use because unlike the mean, it cannot be skewed by a few carryover events from a previous well. I wanted to mention a recent publication that describes how XMAP multiplexing technology was used in immunogenicity study to simultaneously screen and isotype anti-drug antibodies for Humira as a model system. The multiplexed assay was developed and validated to meet the FDA recommended guidelines for immunogenicity assessments. First, they used biotinylated Humira to enrich Humira reactive anti-drug antibodies from the samples. The Humira-enriched ADA samples were then added to the combined bead sets, and the standard assay steps were performed. First, sample incubation, followed by washing, and then the reactions were incubated with biotinylated Humira and the streptavidin phycoerythrin reporter dye. The captured ADA on each bead set was measured via the PE fluorescence on a Luminex FlexMap 3D instrument. So by applying the cut points that were developed for both screening and confirmation, they were able to simultaneously screen and do ADA isotyping in a single reaction. The results showed that the multiplexed assays performed comparably to industry standards, and the authors concluded that labs should explore the use of multiplexing immunogenicity assays in order to characterize anti-drug antibody responses quickly, with less repeat testing and reduced sample handling. And so we have the citation for the publication uh, available on this slide, but in addition, we can follow up with you and uh, give you some resources if you want to dig into this study uh, in a little bit more detail. So now, the next part, I want to introduce you to our new kid on the block, the XMAP IntelliFlex system. XMAP IntelliFlex provides the same multiplexing platform that you know and trust with enhanced features and an overall better user experience. We all have two models. The standard model has much of the same features that you're used to on the FlexMAP 3D instrument, such as a 500 plex, a single green reporter laser, both 96 and 384 well capability, but it also has an additional decade of dynamic range greater than or equal to 5.5 logs now. And with an integrated PC and a touch screen, it has a more compact footprint that will fit better into today's laboratory environment, as well as new hardware features that make the system really easy to load and unload, but also modular components inside the hood, which allows for easy field service access. The second model, the DRSE model, has the second reporter channel that we're very excited about. This uses a violet laser, and the new channel has about four and a half logs of dynamic range to allow for basically two reporter signals per reaction per analyte. In addition, this model also has a side eject plate carrier to make it easy to connect to laboratory automation systems. So let me tell you a little bit about how the optics work in this new IntelliFlex system. On the left, in the single reporter system, we have our avalanche photodiodes, or the APDs, and our doublet discriminator, DD, for bead classification through the red laser. The green laser excites and sends the reporter fluorescence to the PMT to measure the reporter one emission at about 565 to 585 nanometers. And it will also send reporter signal to the extended dynamic range or EDR detector so that the reporter signal can still be quantified even if the PMT has reached saturation. On the right-hand side, in the dual reporter model, we have an additional 405 nanometer violet laser that excites the second reporter die and measures emission at about 421 to 441 nanometers in a second PMT. So now let me uh, share with you some IntelliFlex performance data. This data was kindly provided by our partner, Thermo Fisher. And in this study, they ran the Procardiplex 45plex panel for human cytokines. And what they're showing us here is the results for IL-8. 
You can see on the left-hand side that when the standard curves on IntelliFlex were compared to the Luminex 200 and FlexMap 3D instruments at all of the possible different calibration settings, the results were virtually identical. And then if you look on the right at the results for a variety of different samples, the results were also very similar to that that can be achieved on the current instruments. So this demonstrates what we call backward compatibility. And this is going to be important for those of you who are all already using an XMAP instrument. You will have the option of seeing the results you're used to, as well as trying some of the new data analysis options. Now let's talk about the new second reporter channel. This data is from some work that we did to evaluate the dual reporter functionality for simultaneously measuring IgM and IgG antibodies specific to SARS-CoV-2. On the left panel, we used Luminex's SARS-CoV-2 multi-antigen kit with some known samples and evaluated the reporter signal in each channel run either separately or together in dual reporter mode. And what you can see is that we can measure the two different isotypes captured onto the same bead with the two reporters, and there is no impact to the signal when they are together in the same reaction. On the right is some work done using a three-plex serological assay, also for SARS-CoV-2, but in this case, ACE2 was added as a competitor to serve as a surrogate marker for neutralizing antibody response. The blue cells show the reporter 2 signal response, and the orange cells show the reporter 1 response. And so you can see as we titrate through the different uh, samples, you're seeing a dose response increase in signal. And then, uh, if you look at the green highlighted cells, this is showing wells where we got a greater than or equal to 30% binding inhibition with the addition of the ACE2. So we think that the dual reporter is going to be really useful for these types of serological and neutralizing antibody applications. With both reporter channels, you're essentially doubling the data that you can get per reaction by being able to measure both IgM and IgG or any two isotypes together at the same time. So here's an example of nucleic acid assays that were run in the dual reporter mode. On the left-hand side, we had a two-plex assay for two different oligonucleotide targets. Each one was labeled with a different reporter dye. And what you can see here is that when we have both targets, and both reporters present in the same reaction at the same time, the signal is equivalent to what we see when we only have one target and one reporter present. So this is actually a first step, an important first step, to show the functionality of the two reporter system. And since we really saw no interference, we were pretty pleased with the results. Now, finally, we wanted to have another model system that would look at the performance when we actually have both reporters on the same molecule captured onto the same bead. So here on the right, we have a DNA target that has been dual labeled with the two reporter dyes. One die is on the five prime end of the target and one is on the three prime end. Thus, we have a single analyte molecule that's dual labeled. And again, we see no impact on the performance in the dual reporter system as compared to when we have only one die or the other. So we feel pretty confident in the performance of the dual reporter, and we're pretty excited about the usefulness that we think this is going to provide. As a final example, which is shown conceptually here, is a dual reporter assay that we think would be really relevant in pharmacology and drug discovery. With the dual reporter system, you could simultaneously measure a free versus a bound drug. If you have specific antibodies that recognize the free form of the drug and the bound form of the drug, you could label them with different reporters and measure them simultaneously. Although not drawn here, you might envision that the antibody specific for the free drug would actually bind to both forms, depending on the location of the epitope. But then you would be able to measure the bound form as a percentage of the total that was present in the sample. So we think this is a really kind of creative and interesting possible application uh, for the dual reporter system. And we're really excited to see somebody uh, try it out and let us know how it works. So now before we finish up, I would like to pass the presentation back over to Josh for some closing remarks. 
Thanks, Sherry. So the next slide I'm, I'm, is where I want to circle back to talk a little bit more about uh, when Sherry was discussing the ADA and isotyping in the, in the same well. Uh, currently, this is not being done, at least as far as I know, by any other technology. So either you do just the ADA or then you do the isotyping, isotyping separately and then you're isotyping each one separately. So that could be multiple ELISAs um, or multiple other types of, of um, assays that you're doing. With this study that was done, you can now combine both the ADA and the isotyping into a single well, which obviously is going to reduce workflow, reduce sample needed, and reduce time to answers. So uh, Luminex is, is launching what we're calling the XMAP ADA ISW Starter Pack, where we provide the beads, the coupling kits, and all the ancillary reagents that are needed to complete the, uh, to, to build the assay. While these assays are custom because each capture uh, molecule is going to be different, the great thing is we have both field application scientists uh, that are available to assist in developing these types of assays for you, and then we also have um, our custom asset development lab based in Austin called the Explore Lab. So we, we really feel like this, this is going to be you know, this offering is going to allow for you to get your answers in a much faster and more cost-effective manner. So if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me or to Sherry. So that's our last slide. I just want to end it with a thank you. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for that presentation. It was very informative. Um, as, as I said before, we're very excited about the IntelliFlex. You can see the applications that we've already shown that, that, are, um, that are available on the new instrument, and then also some applications that are conceptually relevant, and we feel like you know this is really going to uh, assist in your drug development moving forward. So thanks again, and we look forward to fielding any questions that you may have.